Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the ZK Whiteboard Series. Uh, today I'm here with uh, my friend, coworker, um, applied cryptographer extraordinaire, William Bourgeau. Um, William studied math at EPFL um, and then has been working on uh, applied cryptography and zero knowledge proof systems um, for a while. Uh, he is, in, in my opinion, one of the top applied cryptography engineers in the world. Uh, so, really happy to. Uh, have William here to talk about Planky E2. Hi, thanks. Um, glad to be here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about Planky 2 uh, which is a proving system we've developed at Polygon Zero. Um, so what is Planky 2 um, So Planky 2 is a proving system based on Planck plus custom gates. Uh, which is sometimes called TurboPlank. Um, so that's the IOP, and we then need a programmable commitment scheme, and for that we use Fry. So the, the IOP is like the part of the proving system that basically verifies that, uh, you know, the, the proof is, that, that allows us to argue that some proof is valid, and then the polynomial commitment scheme is what like encodes that. Yeah, exactly, polynomial. yeah. Because yeah. uh, we're like checking relations about polynomials, and then Polynomial commitment scheme allows us to do that succinctly. Yeah, exactly. So this is the information theory of like writing a program inside a, an arithmetic circuit, for example. And this is the crypto, how to make it like succinct mm -hmm. and verifiable. Um, and, and we built Planky 2 with one main goal in mind. It's for fast recursion. So we wanted to build the fastest um, recursive proof system. But, but not just fast recursion, also very, very fast uh, proofs in general. Right? Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, we wanted to, to build the fastest prover um, that was also able to do recursion. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, cool. So what are recursive proofs? When, when you talk about recursion, like what, what, what does that mean? Right. Yeah, uh, good question. So recursion is um, a technique where you verify a proof inside another proof. So in a proving system, um, you have two algorithms, the prover, uh, P, and the verifier, V. Okay. And this proving system outputs a proof pi, and then you want to produce another proof um, that pi is valid. Okay. Um, the easiest way to do so is just to um, write V in a circuit. Okay. So your proving system um, is based on uh, arithmetization, like R1CS or like Planck. Um, and if this uh, arithmetization is powerful enough, you can write any kind of program um, in a circuit. Uh, v is an example of a program. So you can write V in, inside a circuit. Um, and since V accepts if and only if the proof uh, pi is valid, um, with high probability, if the proof system is sound, then um, just writing V in a circuit should work for recursion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so, so the verifier is some computation. We know that we can express that computation in a circuit, and so we can have a proof that uh, is valid if and only if the proof that it's verifying is valid. Exactly, yeah. yeah. You could also, that would be a very bad idea, you could also write P inside the circuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's, the, that's why uh, zero knowledge proofs are so powerful, is that you can uh, verify them succinctly and then also like, write them succinctly in the circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So what are the current uh, approaches to recursion? How are people uh, approaching this problem right now? So pre Planky 2. So pre Planky 2, um, so pre Planky 2, like uh, even pre Planck, let's say, um, we had proof system like proof systems like Graph 16 um, that used sparing friendly elliptic curves. Okay, so Graph 16 uh, uses an elliptic curve E, uh, which has base field FQ, okay, uh, and it's uh, pairing friendly. That just means it has some additional structure that. You know, it gives this nice kind of map that we that helps for exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, and 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 then the um, the proving system uh, uses this elliptic curve 
E over FQ. And there's another field that you can define on this elliptic curve. It's FP. Okay. So without going too much uh, into details, P divides the order of the elliptic curve. So the elliptic curve is a, an abelian group, which has an order. And you take P, uh, a, factor, a prime factor of this order. Um, and so you can work on FP, uh, which we call the scalar field. So we have the base field and the scalar field. Yeah, the, the base. The, yeah, the base field is where like the elliptic curve points are, and then the scalar field has order equal to the order of the, yeah. the group itself. Exactly, and then and then uh, the magic of it is that you have um, an action of FP uh, on E. Uh, which takes a scalar x and a point p, and where you get uh, the so-called scalar multiplication, x times p, which belongs to the curve. Okay, uh, and so like this operation of scalar multiplication is fully uh, FQ operations, mm -hmm. okay. even if x is in FP. So what does this mean for the verifier? Right. So. Um, in a system like Graph16, or, or really any proof system uh, using elliptic curves, the verifier V um, will have to do operation in both uh, FP and FQ. So uh, yeah, I should mention that the proving system itself um, is over FP, okay? Mm -hmm. So if it's either Planck or R1CS, like the actual arithmetic circuit that you will build will be uh, over FP. So what, what I'm like writing my programs in, so to speak, or, or writing my statements in that I'm trying to prove, the, I'll, I'll be using values. Yeah, exactly. FP. Your, your scalar values will all be like elements of uh, this scalar field FP. Mm -hmm. All right. But the, the, this sounds fine, right? Because on a CPU, like I have my really fast MacBook Air, and I, I know that my CPU can do uh, operations in FP and FQ like pretty efficiently. Yeah. So, so what's what's the issue with the recursion? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as Brendan said, like there's no issue in general. Like Graph 16 and like all um, proving system based on elliptic curves are totally fine. Uh, the issue comes up when you try to do recursion. Okay. So we want to write V. Okay. So we want to write the verifier inside a circuit. Um, and so as I uh, wrote before, we'll have to do operations over bo both FP and FQ. And so the issue for recursion is that if we stay on the same curve, um, then FP, oops, or those are very cheap because this is the native field of the um, proving system. But FQ ops are um, very costly. Okay, um, Just because it's, uh, the proving system itself is not, not over um, FQ, so we have to do something called non-native arithmetic. So there's, there's been some improvements over the year, but um, but it's still very costly uh, to do. And so all, and so you end up with a verifier circuit that's very large. And, and so it's costly because I, I can't just express my FQ values in FP because if I do a bunch of FQ multiplications, it will overflow at a different point. In exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so I have to express FQ values as like, like I break it up into some number of limbs and then do range checks to check. Exactly, the overflow. yeah. Okay. Sounds expensive. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so what? So but but there's a solution, right? That that uh, existing proving systems use, right? There, there are some like maybe not totally optimal. Yeah. Approaches. Um, exactly. So there's something called two cycles of elliptic curves. So in a two cycle, um, you have your original curve E, and and second curve E prime. Um, e prime is defined with base field FP, so the scalar field of E and has a scalar field FQ, okay, which is the base field of E. Okay, so you, you basically switch uh, the base and scalar field uh, compared to E. Okay. And what do you get by changing curves uh, by using E prime? 
So like if you instead, so like the proof pi is over e, but now if you write your verifier v over e prime, okay, you write verifier in a circuit over e prime, then the scalar field of e prime is fq, which is uh, the base field of e. So like all the fq ops will be very cheap, okay. So now uh, fq is cheap. Uh, and then um, one issue that comes up immediately is that um, FP operation become expensive. So like FP operation will have to be done non-natively. So FP now becomes uh, costly. But in general, the verifier does a lot more operations over FQ. Uh, for example, pairings are like very expensive FQ operations. And so you gain something by changing curves uh, because, because now all the FQ operation um, can be done uh, basically for free. Okay. Cool. So, so the most expensive part of verifying the proof is now is like pretty cheap. Yeah. And okay. So that I mean that seems fine. But That's what's the <laughs> what's the catch? Okay. So um, it is fine. The biggest catch is if you want to use a pairing uh, a proving system uh, using pairings, such as Graph 16 or um, any proving system using uh, KZG, the KZG polynomial commitment scheme. Um, then we don't know any uh, such cycles. So E and E prime uh, both pairing friendly. So we want something like that, okay? So if we want to have like graph 16 on both curves. But the issue is that we don't know any such cycle uh, with reasonable size, okay? So I think the, the size of the, the best known cycle is uh, between seven and eight hundred bits. Okay, which uh, is, which is huge when you consider like your CPU is doing sixty-four bit operations, yeah. and and so you're you're doing like a ton of field arithmetic exactly of, uh, in that yeah. field. Which, okay. So so yeah, your operations uh, become way too slow, and actually, I think you're much better just using something like graph sixteen over a way uh, smaller curves, and then do all the. FQ operation like non natively. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so that's an approach that's taken by like Aztec, I think. And, exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, so if you want to look those up, those are like the M and T curves. Okay. Um, and so that's the big issue with uh, cycles of elliptic curve if you want to use um, pouring systems using pairings. Mm -hmm. um, if you yeah, yeah, you can read. If you if you want to use a pruning system that doesn't use pairings, but that's also based on elliptic curves, um, there's something called Halo. Okay, so um, so one other polynomial commitment scheme uh, that works with elliptic curves and it's based on the discrete logarithm uh, problem is uh, the IPA based PCS. So, so what does IPA stand for? Uh, Inner product argument. <laughs> okay, uh, that's also known as a bullet or bootle proofs. Um, so that's also a polynomial commitment scheme um, using elliptic curves. It's based on the discrete log, as I said. Uh, so D log as compared to uh, graph 16 or KZG that are based on a pairing. Um, related um, security assumptions. Uh, and so the discrete log um, means, the discrete log problem means that you can use uh, curves of size uh, 256 bit. Okay, that will give you 128 uh, bits of security. Okay. So, so that's much cheaper than our 700 bit. Exactly, and much cheaper than the 400 bits you need if you actually want security with pairing friendly curves. Mm -hmm. um, so one issue with I IPA, one very big issue with IPA-based uh, polynomial commitment scheme is that the verification is linear. So linear in the size of your circuit, okay? Which sounds terrible for recursion because um, as I said before, recursion, you want to write the verifier in a circuit. If the, verif if the verifier is linear, you will end up with a very large circuit, which is bad for recursion. Um, but this really nice technique called Halo um, gives a way to 
make the make the verification uh, logarithmic by using something called uh, accumulation. So it's an accumulation scheme. Okay, and accumulation means they instead of verifying the whole proof uh, in recursion, they defer the verification until the end of the process. Uh, and so, so, so that means like I like I, I'm, I'm trying to do trying to generate a recursive proof, and so I'll verify part of the proof in the circuit, and then basically basically say like here's this other part that you have to check later, and you have this like strong guarantee that this proof that I'm checking here is valid if and only if the the deferred part like check yeah sort of passes exactly so like we we would have um, just like a graph like that. Uh, that would be something called IVC, uh, incrementally verifiable computations. Okay, let's add two more. Okay, so each uh, dot is a proof, and each arrow is like recursion. So this proof is a proof of this. This is a proof of this. This is a proof of this. Uh, so instead of like being a full proof, this is like an accumulation step. Okay, this is also an accumulation step. And here, if you're done with what you're trying to do with um, recursion. Here you actually verify, okay, and so this is logarithmic. This is logarithmic too because this is the, um, this is the accumulation step, and this will be linear, okay. And so what you gain by that is that every time you want to do recursion, you only pay a logarithmic cost, and then at the end you have a linear cost, but usually you don't really uh, worry about that because you can verify it natively. You don't really need to do recursion on this one. Yeah. So, so this like all the checks are on the CPU. Exactly. So yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. You don't you don't need to like uh, recurse on this. Yeah. Cool. All right. And um, yeah. So Halo uses um, elliptic curves. Um, so you also need a two cycle um, because you want to uh, uh, do all the. I mean, as I explained before, like you want to do like all the FQ operations natively. So actually, you will have. A ch two chains, okay. Uh, okay, and I messed it up because actually what happens is that uh, you will, so this will be like E prime, this will be E, and you will verify it like this. Okay. Something like that. Okay, so like you, you switch curve every time you verify. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so. So, so, so this is actually uh, what Planky one uh, was based on was Halo, Planck, and Custom exactly. Gates. Exactly. Yeah. So before Planky two, there was just Planky. Yeah. Um, it used it used Halo, so like the accumulation scheme uh, defined in Halo, also the IPA based polynomial commitment scheme, and the arithmetization arithmetization was very similar to what we have now in Planky two. So like also Turbo Planck, and I think it's also um, so Halo is also used uh, by the ECC. Uh, by Mina and by other teams, so it's it's a really nice system. But like we actually found a way to do recursion uh, more efficiently with Blanky too. So it, yeah, so so maybe you could talk a little bit about some of the frustrations with uh, and like complexities around uh, this approach to yeah. recursion. Yeah. Um, so I mean, the first bad thing that I mentioned already is that the final verification is linear. Um, so let's say you want to verify it on Ethereum. Uh, that will be an issue, like it will be quite costly to verify on Ethereum or any other L1. Um, another frustration is just accumulation is a really nice idea in the theory. Uh, in practice, it's, it's quite annoying to like always have to keep uh, the accumulators um, in your system. Um, and then the Halo, like in the Halo paper and the usual Halo implementation, they also like defer some non-native arithmetic. So so even with the accumulation step, there's still some non-native arithmetic to do. And they um, found a technique to defer this non-native arithmetic. But that's one more thing you have to uh, keep track of. And in the implementation, you, you end up with like something very complex. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, you're never, you've never fully recursed. Like you've never fully proved all the proofs until the end, right? Because until the end, you only accumulate, right? So like this proof is, or like this one, it's basically useless without going all the way up. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so Planky 2. So Planky 2, um, our solution uh, to recursion and like to the problems in Halo was to just not use elliptic curves. 
So instead of elliptic curves, we use something called Fry. Okay. So Fry is something called a low degree test um, that was built by Stalker and that's usually used in stocks. But you can actually modify Fry to get a PCS, Polynomial Commitment Scheme. Okay. And that's what we need for Planck. And Fry has a lot of benefits compared to uh, elliptic curve based uh, PCS. Uh, first one is um, that you don't have elliptic curves, so, <laughs> so no uh, non native stuff. Okay. So, so we're just doing everything in FP. Exa uh, exactly. Yeah. So, so the proofs are in FP. The, the so like the, there's only one field. So like you couldn't yeah. even like think about doing anything in another field. Like Fry only uses one field, and we do all the arithmetic in this field. Okay. Uh, so as I explained before, like this was the main pain point with um, recursion on EC-based systems. So like not having to deal with non-native arithmetic is a, a real benefit. Uh, another one that's very good for performance is we can use any field, and in particular small fields. So with elliptic curves uh, security assumptions, you need large fields of at least 256 bits, even larger for uh, pairing friendly curves. Uh, so with Fry, you don't have any elliptic curves, so you can use any field that you want, and small fields are in general faster than big fields. That's just because our CPUs are doing arithmetic natively in 64 bits. Yeah. So if we, if we want to get really fast, we sort of have to pay attention to what's really fast in hardware. Exactly, yeah. And lastly, um, Fry doesn't have a trusted setup. And is a post quantum secure. Okay, so no trusted setup, that was already the case with uh, Halo, but it's not the case with um, Graph16 or KZG. Um, so that's always good to have. And post quantum secure, secure uh, any proving system based on elliptic curves, or at least a discrete logarithm, is not post quantum secure. Uh, but Fry is, so that's a benefit, like if you care about uh, this stuff. In, in 50 years, when we get a big number. Exactly. In <laughs> 50 years, <laughs> like, Prokity Pro will still be there. <laughs> All right, so that's why we use Fry. Um, then, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, we use Turbo Planck, which is, which is basically the, the main arithmetization that like, new proving systems use because it's so powerful. Um, so yeah, Planck plus custom gates, very powerful. Um, Arithmetization much more powerful than O1CS. And so since we want to do recursion, we want to write the verifier in a circuit. So we need like an arithmetization that makes it easy to write complex operations uh, like a Fry verifier. Mm -hmm. um, and that's basically it. Um, okay, so let me talk in more details about this small field. Um, so we have a lot of choice, we can choose any field. Um, and so um, we can take any prime, okay, and look at FP. Uh, and so how do you find P? What's the best P? Well, um, we found that there's this prime. Uh, found by our colleague Hamish, um, that he named the Goldilocks field or Goldilocks prime, let's say Goldilocks field uh, with FP. Okay, this prime is really good, okay? Um, first benefit of this prime is that it fits in 64 bits. So, so one element can fit in a word and... Exactly, yeah. so that's pretty easy to see. Um, the prime P itself fits in 64 bits, so like any element smaller than the prime fits also in 64 bits. Um, so that's like one of the main reasons it's so fast. 64-bit uh, arithmetic is, is done natively on CPUs. Um, so that makes computations in this field very fast, uh, out of the box. Uh, and, that, and then the special form of these primes, like it's not any random prime. Um, if you write it in binary, for example, like it has some a nice structure. And this structure makes it easy to do, like for example, reductions. So reductions uh, of uh, 128 
bit integer, um, mod p is quite cheap, okay? Um, why do we need to do 128-bit integers mod p? Well, if we uh, have x times y uh, with x and y 64 bits, uh, then we get a 128-bit uh, integer. So like, this means that uh, multiplication modulo p is fast because you multiply them uh, in, uh, to a 128-bit integer and then you do reduction modulo p. Um, and then there's some cool features. There's like a ton of cool features. Uh, one that I like is that a mul add of 32-bit uh, integers uh, doesn't overflow. So the, these two are more for like speed on the hardware side. So like making uh, yeah. operations for proving really, really fast. This is more for uh, optimization on the constraint side. So, yeah. so like in, in uh, our programs or our statements that we're trying to prove, uh, we'll do a lot of 32-bit uh, arithmetic. And so th this just allows us to express that with fewer constraints. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if a mole add is x times y plus z. And so like if x, y, and z are 32-bit integers, then you can compute that uh, the result is more than p. All right, so that's the Goldilocks field. That's uh, one of the main reasons uh, Planck 2 is so fast. Um, yeah, cool. Sure, good. So I, I, I think we found that there was like a 40x improvement or something from um, moving from a 256-bit uh, oh, yeah? field to Goldilocks. I, I, I could be misremembered. There's a, there's a really substantial uh, uh, So who, who tried like with a large field? Uh, I think Daniel. Ah, might okay. Have, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, uh, but like on Planck 2, because like in Planck no, 2? No, no, well, no, no, just in, uh, in terms of field or like measuring performance of like field operations. Oh, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so, so not a perfect comparison, but you can yeah, yeah. sort of no, see that's the, really cool. the magnitude. Um, Cool, and I, I, I guess a, another nice property is that if you want to do um, FPGA or GPU implementations of Planck 2 it's much easier um, with the Goldilocks field because, uh, yeah, it, I guess it takes up less space on, on the chip. Yep. Cool. Um, should we continue? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so, um, so let me talk a bit more about the arithmetization. So, um, there's a lot of flavors of Turbo Planck. Uh, it's very, um, you can really choose like to do it how you want. Like there's like a basic structure, but then you can be like creative on how you do uh, custom gates. So we do it this way. So first we have constants. So, okay, let me start from the beginning. So we're gonna look at a row of the trace, okay? So in Planck you have a trace, which is basically a table or a matrix. Um, and your constraint works, your, like your gate uh, works on a, a row of the table. Um, so how does a row look in Planck 2? Uh, it starts with a bunch of constants. And then we have two types of wire, x0 uh, to xv, let's say, and then y0, yw. Okay, so those are constants. Um, what does it mean to be constants? Uh, it means that they are part of the secret description. Okay, it's not part of the witness. This, uh, these constants are committed to in the verifier key. So the verifier has access to this information. It's part of the secret description. Um, and then you can, you can choose how many constants you want, and then these constants are used in the gate to um, define the constraints. Um, those are what we call routable wires, and it, those are advice wires. Okay, so this is actually the witness um, part of the table, uh, and we've split it in two. Okay, so in traditional Planck, all the wires are routable, so you can uh, have copy constraints between any two wires um, in the table. Uh, but we're 
Yeah. But it basically enforcing that uh, gates like the gates sort of share the same value. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So or the yeah. wires to to different gates. Right? If you have like table, uh, we can say like okay, this this one is the same as this one. We add a copy constraint. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but this is not free. Uh, in the proving system, um, in Planck, there's a, something called the permutation argument to enforce these uh, copy constraints. Uh, and this is, I mean, this is not for free. You have to pay a cost for that. And we realized that we don't need to be able to um, have copy constraints between any two wires. We can just restrict the number of wires that can be used in this permutation argument. Um, and then the wires that cannot be in the copy constraints, we call them advice wires. And those are used for intermediate computations. Okay, so let me give you like a very simple example. Uh, if you want to uh, compute x to the 16 in a gate, uh, the easiest way to do so is maybe like to compute x to the 4, and th and then say that's equal to y, and then compute y to the 4. Okay. So. Why you don't need why that's like an intermediate computation, and so you don't need to route it, and so you, you would put why in the advice wires. But and, and then you would set your like some other routable wire to this yeah wire. yeah exactly. So like this one, this is the result that you want, yeah. uh, and this will be routable. Uh, but the intermediate computation, you don't need it in the permutation argument. Cool. Um, all right, and so how are those? Uh, constants and wires related, uh, they need to satisfi satisfy a polynomial constraint. OK, uh, the constraint is that this is equal to 0. Um, P is a polynomial, OK? Um, and and that's the custom part, right? So when we say we have custom gates, uh, that's P. We change P in between every gate. Uh, P could be like defining uh, an arithmetic operation or hash function, something like that. Okay. And so, and so the cool thing is that it's very. Um, you can, you can increase the width. So you can increase or decrease the width of the table. Okay. Um, to have like more wires per row and be able, being able to do like more um, operations and like more arithmetic on every row, and uh, you can also increase the degree of p. And those those like those two increases will um, get you like more expressiveness. So the, this is kind of in contrast to something like R1CS where you have like very like low degree. Constraints. Exactly. So, like our NCS is basically just like quadratic um, type constraints. Uh, here we can like be very creative. We can um, have P be a polynomial, a very high degree polynomial. So, of course, it's not for free. Um, if you increase the width, you increase the size of the proof. Uh, and if you increase the degree, you will also, uh, in some sense, inc increase the size of the proof. So, it's not for free, but you, you can play with those two parameters um, to get like the size of the circuits that, that, that's better for you. Cool. Um, yeah, let, let me just give like uh, what we use in uh, Planky 2 uh, as a default for recursion. So we use uh, 135 um, wires. So that's the width of the table. And the degree of P, the maximum degree of P uh, is 9. Okay. So that's pretty uh, high degree compared to something like R1CS, as we said, which is of degree 2. Mm -hmm. And so does using fry allow us to, because that, that, that's um, a way wider table than, uh, than like other uh, Planck imp implementations, does using fry allow us to kind of like have sort of more degrees of freedom with, with respect to how we? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So like uh, the first thing that I can say about that is that um, so usually increasing the width of the table um, is pretty expensive in EC-based systems because you have your you have your table and then you need to commit to each column, mm -hmm. okay? And so like you have your um, each column will uh, become a polynomial commitment, 
So that will be like an elliptic curve point in uh, IPA based PCS, for example, or even KZG. Um, so if you have 135 columns, you will need 135 uh, points as a commitment. Uh, in it's a huge proof size. Right? It's a, that's a huge proof <laughs> size. Huge. <laughs> still smaller than Planck 2, but, <laughs> yeah. but still. The, but still, then, then also the verification becomes expensive because you have to do something called the MSM in the verification of this uh, type of um, systems. And so like this MSM of like 135 uh, curve points will be quite uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. So in Planck 2, we don't need that because um, the commitment how do we actually commit uh, to polynomials? We can do that in a batched way. So like we can commit to uh, P0, uh, to like PN 135. So let's call this like PN. And the way we do that is that we um, have a Merkle tree um, whose leaf are the evaluations of uh, all these polynomials at like a subgroup uh, element. So. Let me write and, it. And, and to be clear, the, these polynomials are uh, interpolated polynomials from each, like corresponding to each column. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that would be like just one root of Merkle. Uh, so instead of having like uh, 135 uh, curve points, we just have like 256 bits, just like one one root of a Merkle tree. Mm -hmm. So like we, we already gain a lot um, just by using Fry that way. Mm -hmm. um, of course, it's not for free because like when you open this Merkle tree, you will have to open like all the columns. So like we still get like an increase in proof size, but um, yeah. Um, and so there's um, two parameters in Fry that we can use um, to like tune the performance of the proving system. Uh, those are called the rate. Um, let's call it two to the row. So it's often a, it's a power of two, and um, the number of queries. Okay, let's call it Q. So the, the, this is actually my favorite thing about Fry is this uh, because there's this cool space time yeah. trade off, right? Yeah. So how, so, how does that work? So. So these two parameters are related, okay? So they're related by the equation um, lambda, which is your security. Um, the security of the, the Fry uh, protocol uh, is actually rho times Q plus uh, a constant, let's call it uh, G. Uh, it's, um, it's used in grinding, okay? So I don't think we'll get into that, but basically you can set this guy to like, I don't know, 16, and uh, and then you do some grinding in your protocol, which is basically free, okay? Um, but so like, if we ignore this grinding part, then we have like, basically rho and q are inversely proportional. So like, if you increase one, you have to decrease the other, okay? Uh, and so what happens if you actually uh, decrease rho, for example, like the rate, decrease uh, the rate, okay? If you decrease the rate, you have to increase the number of queries, okay? Um, increase Q. And what you get by doing that is much faster proofs. So faster proving times. Uh, but sorry, larger proofs. Just because I have to send you, if you're the verifier, I have to send you all the, the data to verify each query. Exactly, yeah. So like each query is uh, actually like you have to open the Merkle tree um, by sending Merkle proofs. And so you will have just to send like more uh, Merkle proofs. Okay. And like inversely, if you um, increase here the rate and decrease um, the number of queries, you get um, slower proofs. Okay. Uh, but um, smaller proofs, okay? So, and that's something that's important um, for Planky 2 because Fry uh, in general give you, gives you like very large proofs, much larger in general than the, um, than the proving system based on elliptic curves. So having this option of like 
um, paying the trade-off between uh, space and time. So like if you have like very uh, beefy hardware um, to the computer proof, you can just um, increase the rate to get smaller proofs uh, in the end. And this, I mean, to me, this is sort of the beauty of Planky too, right? Because before we didn't have efficient recursion for Fry. Um, and so you basically had to choose, like, like if you were building a ZK rollup or something and, and posting proofs to Ethereum, you had to choose uh, somewhere, some point in this spectrum where your proofs couldn't be too big uh, that they wouldn't be able to fit in a block, but they couldn't also be uh, too slow or else you'd, you'd just get killed on, on proving time. Yeah. So, so with Plucky 2, we can, um, for like the expensive part, we can make that really, really fast because we don't really care about proof size at that point. And then uh, we can recurse and like we end up, uh, maybe you're going to talk about this, but, but, but we end up with um, like a really small circuit that's sort of our like recursion uh, threshold. And, and it's cheaper to make that a small proof, right? Than, yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. So like, um, the way I presented it, like um, you, you could think that you have to choose between one or the other, but like actually using recursion, as uh, Brendan said, you don't have to choose. You can um, do faster proofs when you don't care about the proving size. And then once you care, for example, when you want to push to L1, um, you just increase the rate, use recursion to compress the original proofs, um, and then you, you get like a smaller proof. Okay. Um, right. So, good? Yeah, good. OK, so let me give you an example of uh, a custom gate in Planky 2. Uh, I'm going to take one of the simplest gates. Uh, it's the one we call arithmetic base gate. OK, so there is also an arithmetic gate, but it works um, in the extension field, so I will not get into that, but like in Planky 2, we sometimes work in the extension field of the Goldilocks field. Um, so this one is for like base field operations, the uh, operations on the Goldilocks field. Okay, and like the goal of this gate is to do computations like x times y plus um, z equals w, okay? Um, and we can actually use some constants here. So like um, C0 times X and Y plus C1 times Z equals W. Okay, that's the kind of operation we want to do um, often. So like, why do we need these constants? Well, it makes things easy. For example, if we just want to do like uh, X times Y equals W, we just set C0 to one and C1 to zero. Um, so you can see like how having these constants is like helpful uh, to do like basic arithmetic operations. Okay, so if we go back to our um, custom gate design, we have the constants. Those are like easy. It's C zero and C one. Okay, then we have routed wires. We will have X. Y, Z, and W, okay? So they all need to be routed. There is no intermediate computation here. Uh, it's like a degree two constraint, okay? So the constraint is very simple. It's W minus C1 X Y minus C0 X Y minus C1 Z. Okay, so that's a degree two polynomial. We don't need any um, intermediate operations. So like all the wires are uh, routable. Okay, um, and now what's cool is that we have a white table and here we only use like four wires. So it's a bit wasteful. Uh, so what we've implemented in Planky 2 is that we actually stack operations of this kind in a single row, okay? So here I will have the first operation and then what happens is that I can also stack on the side another one of these operations, okay? Uh, 
Okay, and then I continue. So like here, I have four wires. My uh, the number of routed wires that we use by default in uh, Planky Two is eighty. So I can actually put like twenty such operations in just one row, uh, which is like very good compared to something like original Planck. So in original Planck, um, there wasn't any custom gates. There was like just one gate which looked a lot like this one. Okay. And so in, in original Planck, you can do like one operation per row, okay? And we can do 80, uh, we can do 20. <laughs> so like, it's basically a 20 times uh, improvement in the length of the trace. Um, it's not for free, but since we need um, such a white table for Poseidon, for the, um, the hash functions we use, uh, we can use that uh, also for like arithmetic operations. So like arithmetic operations are basically free in Planky 2. Cool. So um, another optimization, uh, other optimizations we use to make the this verifier circuit smaller and um, is on Merkle trees. Okay. So like the um, so like in Fry, Fry basically commits to polynomials using Merkle trees. So like and then you do a lot of uh, Merkle proof verification. So we need to make that fast um, to improve Planky two. Uh, we use a bunch of optimizations for that. Um, first one is one we call Merkle caps. Okay, so Merkle caps uh, is um, a version of Merkle roots. Okay, okay so like in the in the usual Merkle tree, uh, you have the leaves. Let's just do four leaves. Okay. And then you have the intermediate layer, and then you have the root of the tree. Okay. Um, and so you get only one root, but then you have to do like two, um, you have to go up two times in the Merkle proof, basically. So, like a Merkle proof for this guy would be like, um, okay, a Merkle proof of this guy will be like this one, and then you go up, and then this one. Okay. So, like your Merkle proof has two elements. Um, what you can do is instead of giving the root, you can just give you can just give um, this as a root. So this is the cap, okay, and this is the root. Okay, so the Merkle cap will be larger than the Merkle root. It will have two elements instead of one. Uh, you, the cap doesn't have to be at the first layer. It could be like. Uh, at any layer below the root. Um, and then if you want to send a Merkle proof, you, let's say again for this leaf, you just send this one, okay? You just send this element and then uh, let's give them name, okay? And then you have like a, the hash of a, X and Y, you verify that this is equal to this guy, okay? And so, you need to do like some arithmetic to know like which one of these or this uh, you need to verify in, but that's quite easy to do. Um, and what we gain by doing so that is also like kind of a space-time uh, trade-off. Uh, we save on the size of the Merkle proofs, and then this verification here is actually pretty simple. It's just like a random access in this list. So the cap is a list of um, hashes, and we just do a random access on these hashes to verify a Merkle proof. Cool. Um, okay. Um, now uh, let me talk about something called Starkey. Um, so Starkey. So you will find Starkey on our GitHub um, alongside Plunky too. Um, so Starkey is the Stark equivalent um, of Plunky two. So Plunky two is based on Plunk. Uh, but um, but you can realize that Starks are more precisely uh, the air uh, arithmetization, okay, is um, kind of a subset of Planck, okay. So Planck is basically air plus um, copy constraints and the permutation argument and custom gates, okay. Um, and sometimes you don't need either of those. Okay. So sometimes you, um, 
you don't need like Kubecon constraints and you don't need custom gates. One such example is for a VM. Okay, so in a VM, um, you have like the state of your VM in a row. Uh, so like that's the state, that's like a row of your trace. Okay, and then you get the next state, which is below it. Okay, and what you want to verify is that the state transition is done correctly. Okay, the VM state tr transition. So, so just to unpack this a little bit more, because I, I think it's a cool insight. Like, um, if you think about what air is, it's basically like the same like constraints repeated over and over again, and uh, each row has access to, to like the adjacent row, right? Yeah, exactly. And so you're basically saying that Quantic is, is basically like a bunch of airs wired together, yeah. where, where you can have gates uh, that you know, impose different constraints, and uh, you can have wires uh, that connect them in, in arbitrary ways, as opposed to just like values and adjacent rows can. can yeah, be yeah, exactly. So actually, like in in some version, versions of Planck, um, you will not have access to the next state in the constraint um, because you don't really need to, since you have copy constraints. Uh, but like. Um, in TurboPlank, for example, like some people implementing elliptic curve operations in TurboPlank do actually um, include the next state in the constraint to like do like incremental computations in Planck. So Planck is very like you can customize it as much as you want. You, you can include the next state or not. Um, but yeah, if you include the next state, then the error is like a subset of Planck. Um, and so to go back to our VM example, um, so like I have the state, I have the next state, and then the only constraint I need is that the transition is done correctly. Okay, so this is that. Um, that's like the transition. And then I will write a bunch of constraints to encode uh, the transition, the state transition, and then and then you do the transition again and again and again. Like it never changes. Okay, just just like your CPU, it's like the same. Each cycle does something. And yeah. Then, yeah. Exactly. So like you don't need custom gates because you can just do the same transition on each row. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the reason why um, the best way to write VMs uh, in a zk circuit is not with Planck but actually with Starks. Okay, um, and so that's the reason why we built Starky. Okay, so uh, we wanted to write um, code for a VM. We, re we realized that Planky2 was a bit overkill for that. Uh, Planky2 is built for recursion, so you need um, to wire and you need like custom gates. We use extensively custom gates, but like Planky2 was overkill for the VM, and so we um, built Starkey, which is basically like Planky2 removing all uh, the Planck specific stuff, and it uses the same framework, so like the same field, the same hash functions, and so on, uh, and it's usually much faster than Planky2. One of the reason is um, these transition constraints. So in Planky2, um, you have some uh, restrictions on the degree of the constraints. You cannot go too low. Okay? Uh, most of the time, you have to at least have degree four constraints. Okay? But what you can do um, in degree five, I should say, uh, in, um, in Starks is that you can have uh, degree three, uh, oh, constraints of degree three. Okay? And what you get by having small degree constraint is that, is that you can get a rate uh, of two. Okay. Um, so as I explained before, like having a small rate gives you fast proofs. Okay. And so that's something we use like extensively in Starkey. So like rate of two is basically the smallest rate <laughs> you can have. And so like we use the smallest rate possible to have like the fastest proof possible. Uh, which is something we actually need because like VM computations are quite expensive um, if you have like a lot of cycles. So you actually really need to have like fast, a fast prover for VM proofs. Cool. All right, so um, maybe as a last uh, thing about Planky2 is like how do we combine all of this together like Starkey, Planky2, and in the ZK rollup context, okay? So in a ZK rollup, you have transactions. 
you have a bunch of transactions. Okay, so, um, and you have the trans these transactions and you want to prove uh, the valid execution of all the, the transactions. So, so, so this would be like Ethereum yeah. transactions? Yeah, Ethereum transactions, um, any kind of VM, but like for us it would be like uh, EVM transactions. Um, and so you want to prove valid execution of these, tra these transactions. Uh, the first thing you could try is just like batch all these transactions together uh, and have like a big proof that all these trans transactions are valid, okay? So in practice, you wouldn't have like just four transactions, you would have maybe, I don't know, 100 or, uh, or more. Uh, and so you end up with like a really large circuit uh, to do that. that. That wouldn't be practical. So that's where you actually use recursion, okay? So instead of like proving all the transactions together, you batch them, okay? Let's batch them. Um, so actually, first thing you would do is actually prove them <laughs> before batching them. So we actually prove them using Starkey. Using Starkey, exactly. So like, these are VM proofs. Uh, as I said before, VM proofs are very fast using Starks. So here we use Starkey and a low rate, okay? So like, to prove uh, the EVM, uh, EVM transactions, for example, you will need a, a lot of cycle and a lot of compute power. So like, you want to make it as fast as possible, and so you use a uh, low rate. Okay, so you have your Starkey proofs. Um, and then what you do is you recursively verify them to a new proof, okay? So this is using recursion, and this is using Plunky2, okay? Plunky2 is built for recursion. Uh, it can recursively verify a Starkey proof. So here we use Starkey, uh, Plunky2, sorry, to aggregate two proofs, okay? And now we're compressing like the, the number of proofs. Uh, final step, we aggregate these two proofs, okay? So this is using Plunky2. Um, and also low rate, okay? We also want like these proofs to be very fast because like, as I said, like, let's say we have uh, 256 uh, base transactions, then here we would have like 128 uh, proofs to generate, okay? So we still want it to be fast so that we can parallelize it uh, and so on. Okay, and then this last proof, we will actually, we will also use Plunky2 uh, for recursion, and then we use a high rate, okay? Uh, why do we use a high rate? Well, this proof will be pushed to L1, okay? So here, um, we have to be careful about the cost of verification, uh, like the gas cost if we push to Ethereum. Okay, so we want a high rate um, to make the proof smaller and cheaper to verify. Um, and here at this step, we only have like one proof to generate. So we can just like uh, have a very powerful machine to generate it. We don't need to parallelize it. Um, and another cool optimization is that this proof we will not do recursion on it because we'll push it to L1 uh, and it will be like natively verified on L1. And so we can actually use Ketchak as the hash function instead of Poseidon. So the reason we use Poseidon is uh, for recursion, but actually Poseidon is much slower than something like Ketchak. Um, so we can use Ketchak to make proof generation faster and also to make proof verification cheaper on L1 since you have like native Ketchak opcodes uh, on Ethereum, for example. Cool. Or, and, and we, I guess you, you could wrap that in KZG if you, if you really wanted to go crazy with Exactly, uh, so like, yeah. So like if the verification is still too expensive um, on Ethereum, like uh, it costs too much gas, for example, uh, and you realize that verifying uh, Growth16 or Planck and KZG proof is cheaper, you can always recurse on this one using uh, Graph16, let's say. Cool. And that's yeah. Plunky2, I guess. That's Plunky2, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I think it's cool because it's not, um, you know, we didn't invent a new PCS uh, or like an IOP, but it, it, I, I think 
Um, I, and I was personally like sort of skeptical when when like Planky Two was being discussed because at that time I think it took like ten minutes to like the fractal was an implementation of recursive yeah. fry and the proving time was crazy. Um, but I think like the core insight um, in Planky Two is like there are so many ways that you can optimize proving systems, especially with fry, because it just opens up like small fields and different hash functions and um, and so I, I, I think it's like really like a like a amazing achievement in in applied cryptography engineering, which I think is yeah. really cool. Yeah, that's I mean that's yeah the beauty of Punky too is like how customizable it is, and like I guess like you can see it in this last uh, diagram. Like we have like all the steps, all the all the steps in recursion use different parameters to like optimize for what you want in in the given layer. Yeah. yeah. And and that I mean we we've seen like really insane uh, results for um, using a super low rate for Starkey right like like 150 Ketchak um, uh, hashes per second on like a MacBook Air which I think it took multiple minutes to do one uh, <laughs> Ketchak uh, hash um, and so yeah I I, th I mean. I'm obviously really biased. But <laughs> I, I, I think that your work like uh, op really opens up the design space for um, for for ZKPs. So okay. cool! Congratulations. Thank cool. you. Cool. Thanks, <laughs> everyone. Thank you.